Pakistan's Prime Minister, or former Prime Minister, Imran Khan, has been ousted through a vote of no confidence. Here are the results. Uh, out of 342 seats, 172 uh, votes were needed to get rid of him, and you know it barely scraped by with 174 in favor. And this is what he was talking about. He was claiming that there's going to be a coup, right? He said that there's a foreign power working to get rid of him, and uh, he let slip that it's the United States. And well, it looks like it looks like it worked because he's no longer the prime minister now, and he he joins a long list. Literally every Pakistani prime minister since Pakistan gained its independence has never completed their five-year term. You know, they've either been removed by a military coup or they've been removed by the courts or they've been assassinated in one case. It, it's, quite, it's quite the jinx, honestly. It's quite the jinx. And I'm going to run you through everything just, just to jog your memory because, you know, people know, okay, Pakistan, uh, you know, Pakistan's prime minister is no longer Imran Khan. Yeah, but why? How did this process work? So at first, you had uh, people in the, the coalition that defected to the opposition. And they said, if there's a vote of no confidence against Imran Khan, we're going to support that, right? And so the, the, the numbers to get rid of him, to oust him, were, were there all of a sudden. And he says that there's this letter uh, 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 proving that there's a foreign conspiracy against him and that if he goes quietly, Pakistan will be spared. And this, this was also you know, communicated through the Pakistani ambassador to the United States. And the, actually, the high court in Islamabad forbid Imran Khan from publishing that letter. So make of that what you will. Because some people said it's fake. Other people, other people say it's real. Why would he make that up? I'm, make of that what you will. He, 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 he was barred from, from sharing it by the um, Islamabad high court. Now, what happened is he went to the Pakistani president and he told him uh, uh, about this. And they dissolved the parliament to, to prevent this vote of no confidence. And then what happened is the opposition were furious. They said, how dare you dissolve the parliament just as we're about to try and get rid of you through a vote of no confidence. So what they did is they went to the Supreme Court in Pakistan. And after about two days, the Supreme Court comes out with a decision and says the vote of no confidence must go ahead. What Imran Khan did was unconstitutional. He doesn't have the right to dissolve parliament um, uh, and uh, you basically block this vote of no confidence. And the vote went ahead and they got rid of him. Right. So it happened. Um, and th this is very serious because you have to understand in Pakistan, uh, you have the government and then you have the army, right? Pakistan is, is in some ways similar to Egypt where the army always plays a crucial role. If you don't have the support of the army, that is not good for you. That is not good for you. And as a matter of fact, the, the army in Pakistan, they had a differing, uh, uh, view on things, right? So whereas Imran Khan, uh, did not, you know, condemn Russia. The army did. The army chief did blast Russia uh, over Ukraine. And, you know, whereas Imran Khan said that the United States foreign policy has cost Pakistani lives and has been detrimental to Pakistan, the army don't, don't share that view. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that the army could him. Obviously, this happened through a legislative process in the, in, the gov in the parliament, in the National Assembly. But it is something that you need to understand about Pakistan. Um... And I just want to show you some of the reactions to this, okay? I just want to show you, uh, this is from Sayyid Bukhari. He said that this is Pakistan's Black Day. The nation's hero is stopped from leading and the looters are empowered. All of Pakistan uh, is heartbroken. Um, and you literally had millions of people coming out on the streets today in protest of this, this, you know, re this removal of Imran Khan. I mean, just look at the size of this crowd. It's unbelievable. Again, I don't know about you, man, um, but there's, there's, uh, there's not many leaders out there who can <laughs> bring out crowds like that. And, and just to show you how popular he is in Pakistan, he was getting crowds like this before they removed him. So it's not just, it's not just because of this, this, this U.S.-backed coup, as it's being called. Uh, th this guy is actually that popular, right? He used to be a cricketer, by the way. For those of you who don't know, he used to be a cricketer 
and he, then he turned to politics. Um, and uh, look, you had, you had people protesting, again, here's in Islamabad. You also had people, uh, sorry, you also had people in Faisalabad. And even London. This is in Hyde Park in London. So, you know, we can't deny the guy's popularity. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would they want to get rid of him? Why is the United States interested in Pakistan right now? You know, they're occupied with Ukraine and... Uh, don't be so naive. <laughs> don't, don't underestimate Uncle Sam's tentacles. Don't underestimate the reach of the CIA. I, I'm not saying it was the CIA, but it's usually the CIA. Just, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't negate how important this is. And I'm going to give you a couple of reasons. And actually, this is what I speculated at first when he brought up this letter, right? He said that they're trying to get rid of me and I have proof. And I speculated what some of the reasons were. And, it, and he, went, he went and confirmed this himself, actually, Imran Khan. Uh, you know, these reasons were indeed um, uh, the exact same ones that, that I thought uh, had led to his ouster. And, I'll, and I just, just want to show you, just to prove the point that the U.S. is interested, very much interested in Pakistan. Uh, take a look at this clip and look at their reaction. This is, again, during a congressional hearing. Look how upset they are because Pakistan refused to condemn Russia at the United Nations. Two other countries in your jurisdiction under South Asia, obviously you have the, the stands as well, uh, Pakistan and Sri Lanka that also voted to abstain uh, from this vote. Uh, can you talk briefly about your disappointment in those decisions and what efforts were made uh, with respect to those countries? I was on the phone at 6 o'clock last night speaking to the uh, Sri Lankan ambassador here. My colleague in the bureau was on the phone with the uh, Indian DCM we have worked very hard, I'm sorry, with the Pakistani DCM, <coughs> to try to convince them to vote um, in favor of this resolution. Um, what's, it is disappointing how many countries have abstained. I would also look to how many countries can I, have Can I just ask, Mr. Ambassador, did, did anybody in the administration pick up the phone and call the Pakistani foreign minister or the prime minister of, uh, of Pakistan? And, no, as, as you know, our, our charge has met recently with the uh, Pakistani foreign minister, but um, on this, as, on, as, on as this you may topic, know, no, on this, Mr. On this topic, uh, on votes in the UN, on the Ukraine vote, on the Ukraine, on Ukraine votes, not specific to the UN General Assembly vote. But as you may know, Prime Minister Khan has recently uh, visited Moscow. And so mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, we're trying there to figure go. out how to engage specifically specifically with the Prime Minister following that decision. Well, as you know, the, uh, there was a meeting uh, with, in, in Delhi with, with, the, with the Russians as well. I, the point is we need a strong, concerted effort with respect to all of these countries, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and India. I understand that you, you made some efforts. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. So th these are things that, that I told you about, that Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, was visiting China, visiting India. I told you they're important, and the Americans obviously care, and they care about Pakistan. They care that Imran Khan, you know, Pakistan abstained from condemning Russia at the um, United Nations um, when the General Assembly adopted the resolution on March 2nd. They had another vote on March 24th. Both times Pakistan abstained. Uh, so did India. So did China. You know, w well over 40% of the world's population, just to put it mildly. Not only that, he actually went to Russia. So... It's not only that, that, that Khan refused to, to, to sanction Russia. He actually went to Russia. He meets with Putin as this war is starting, and he buys 2 million tons of gas and wheat. And you know, he's just basically giving the finger to the Americans. He's, you know, figuratively speaking, he's telling the Americans, go screw yourselves. I'm going to do what I think is best for my country, and you're, no one is going to tell me otherwise. And then on top of that, the EU tried to get him to condemn Russia, and he tells them, who do you think we are? Are, are we your slaves? He literally says that. Are we your slaves? So he's very openly rejecting Western foreign policy, Western attempts to, to you know, to, to guide, <laughs> to, to, to steer Pakistan's foreign policy. He's rejecting that. And he even condemns, he goes and says in the same speech, he says, we were allied with the U.S. in the war on terror. What did we get in return? 
80,000 Pakistanis killed, right? Drones and, and, and various other uh, uh, operations. And so last year, what does Imran Khan do? He says, no U.S. bases in Pakistan. He refuses. Mm. The Americans don't like that, obviously, because uh, th this area is, is very strategic. I mean, not to mention India and Pakistan are nuclear powers. But, you know, again, we, we are talking about, <laughs> man, we, we are talking about uh, Afghanistan, which they occupied for 20 years, which gave them bases on China's doorstep, on Iran's doorstep, in proximity to Russia. They always want excuse. They always look for excuses to expand their bases. That's why in Saudi Arabia they have all these bases till the, to this day, right? At the time, it's oh, we just you know let us in, let us go get rid of Saddam, and they're they're still there to this day. What else did Imran Khan do? He said, "I'm not helping you in Yemen," right? So this is already a couple of years ago in 2015. He said Pakistan must not join the Yemen war. And then of course he backs Palestine. He says, "I am the prime minister of Pakistan. We stand with Gaza. We stand with Palestine." And he posted this, uh, this great quote from Chomsky. So on all fronts, on all fronts, he, he is vehemently, overtly, you know, uh, um, clearly rejecting U.S. foreign policy and also attempts to steer Pakistan's foreign policy. And that, that, doesn't, that doesn't bode well, right? They, 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 they said, you have to go. You have to go. And I know uh, some people think that, uh, you know, this is far-fetched and, and Khan is just making that up. Look, man, <laughs> you obviously don't understand how valuable this, this part of the world is and how valuable Pakistan is as a country, uh, uh, at, you know, its, its, uh, its place geostrategically. You obviously don't understand that the Americans want vassal states. They want countries they can control. They can't do that with China. They can't do that with India. But they did try their luck with Pakistan and... and it looks like it looks like they just they just succeeded, and I want to show you uh, what's going to happen next. This is from Al Jazeera. They're saying that um, that Khan's uh, replacement, right, is uh, Shabazz Sharif. So he's the younger brother of uh, Nawaz Sharif. So uh, Nawaz Sharif was was Pakistan's prime minister three times. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, when when uh, we were living in Pakistan, you had. Uh, Benazir Bhutto, and then, and then his older brother, Nawaz Sharif, right? I think it was, she, she, Bhutto, she was in there until 96, and then he came in in 97, right? So, uh, the, again, that guy's been prime minister three times, but not, not one of them has ever finished their term. Every Pakistani prime minister, they never finish the full five-year term for some reason. Now, this guy is actually not, not particularly uh, in, in, in good standing, legally speaking. He's dealing with a bunch of... Um, uh, uh, legal cases and money laundering and things like that. Um, so that, that again, that's a separate issue. But what happened actually the day of the vote, the deputy speaker of the National Assembly and the speaker, they both resigned. They refused to go ahead with the vote, even after the Supreme Court said the vote must go ahead. And then, of course, they just got someone else to do it. And as, as you saw, it went ahead and they got rid of him. Right. Um, it's it, it's Again, this is, uh, as many people are saying, a black day, right? A black day for Pakistan because, um, you know, you, you have to consider this guy, he came in as prime minister just a few years ago, right? He had to deal with the pandemic, with COVID, um, economic crisis, higher food prices, right? I, I showed you that article the other day just from the BBC. We were going through how everything is more expensive now in Pakistan. Um, and... You know, he's, he's had to deal with, with foreign meddling in his country. It's not easy, right? He didn't have the easiest tenure uh, uh, that you could hope for. Um, and here's the, here the headline from the BBC. Look, Imran Khan ousted as Pakistan's prime minister after vote. <sighs> so remember, the coups, the coups come in many forms. The coups come in many forms. Just because you don't have tanks rolling up in Islamabad, doesn't mean they, they don't have a hand in it. As a matter of fact, when they, when they got rid of Iran's prime minister, they actually had tanks in 1953, right? They actually had tanks. Not American tanks, but, you know, they, 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 actually, they actually had armored vehicles. Just because they do it in a bloodless way, and they do it supposedly, apparently, through a legislative process, doesn't mean that it's been clean. Right? Doesn't mean that it's been clean. Uh... 
Again, look at the size of these crowds. You, it's not every day that politicians pull these crowds. I'm sorry. He said here, uh, thank you to all Pakistanis for their amazing outpouring of support and emotions to protest against U.S.-backed regime change abetted by local Mir Jafars to bring into power a coterie of pliable crooks all out on bail. Shows Pakistanis at home and abroad have emphatically rejected this. So, as I, met, as I just told you, Sharif, um, <laughs> his, <laughs> his potential replacement is out on bail uh, and uh, in trouble for money laundering and other things like that. But do you, do you see how he, he straight up said it? Imran Khan, he straight up said it's a U.S.-backed coup. It's a U.S.-backed regime change. Uh, it doesn't get clearer than that. And I, I honestly, I think the people that are, that are saying, well, he's just making that up to, to avoid being removed from power. I, I don't think that's true. I'm sorry. I, uh, I just don't think that's true. I don't think... The, the high court in Islamabad would have blocked him from publishing that letter if it was just nonsense, right? Why would you, why would you be afraid of people seeing that? Why would you, you know, make sure that it stays confidential if it's worthless and fake? You don't, you don't classify fake documents. And that's, that's just one aspect of it. It's one aspect of it. We know how the CIA operates. We know how the U.S. the State Department operates. We know how the Foreign and Commonwealth Office operate. This is standard procedure. They thought, that, you know, they, they thought, let's take him on. He's not playing ball. And he's been doing this for years. He won't let us put U.S. bases in Pakistan. He won't sanction Russia. He's actually trading with Russia. He won't condemn Russia at the U.N. You know, he, he, he won't play ball with Yemen. Every, every single thing, right? Palestine, he's got to go. And now he's gone.